The if function in Excel is a lot like the game Never Have I Ever. Both ask a question or logical test that tests a true outcome versus a false outcome. But whereas Never Have I Ever is all about making poor life decisions, the if function can help us make smart business decisions. We're talking about cleaning up your values in a worksheet. We're talking about calculating a discount and also creating an alert system so that you don't lose money. And we're going to cover all seven examples in the next 10 minutes. In this example, we want to create a alert system using the if function to let us know when our inventory level percentage gets less than 10%. And we want to display the word low in the inventory warning column and then display nothing if the inventory level percent is above 10%. So what that looks like as an if function, the logical test, we'll just start off with the first cell. So we'll just start typing equal if open parentheses and we just want to get the value of the first cell and then test whether it's below 10%. So we'll click on the cell reference and then we'll put less than, using the less than, than symbol, less than 10%. Okay, so that's our logical test. Our logical test is the value in the inventory level percentage column less than 10%. And if it is, so I'm going to put a comma. So this is where we step into our true value. Our true value, we want to display the word low. So whenever you're using words in this function, you have to put quotations around them. So I'm going to say low in capital letters with an open quotation mark, and then capital letters low, closing quotation mark, and that's our true value. Then we'll put a comma, and our false value is just going to be blank. And the little Excel hack here, if you want to display a blank as the false value, you would just type quotation marks, open quotation mark, close quotation marks, no spaces, and that's how you would enter a blank one. And we're going to use an example later where this blank cell is better than zeros. Okay, so now we're going to close the parentheses. We've finished our function and our if formula is complete. We'll press enter and you can see we've created an alert system now that automatically tells us where the inventory level percentage is low and we don't sort of have to eyeball it. We can use the if function to help us easily spot when we need to order more inventory. So do you ever associate negative emotions to a certain name? Well, my best friend's mom does. She has this sort of negative association with all mics. So we're gonna help her out. We're gonna use the if function to make sure that no mics are invited to the party that she's throwing. We can do that with the if function. So we're gonna use all text values in this formula just to show you that you can use text values only. You don't always have to use numbers in Excel. Here's what that would look like. So we wanna look through the values in column A and identify whether the name Mike is included. And if so, then they're not invited to our party. So it's equal if, open parentheses, so our logical test. We'll just start off with the first one, which you should always do when using the if function. So click here, and then does it equal, here's our logical test, does that equal Mike? And you can use capital letters, doesn't matter. It's still gonna look for Mike, whether it's capitalized or not. So that's our logical test. That works. That would be false for this first value. So we'll just put a comma to get step into our true value. So if that's true, if we spot a mic, we want to make sure that they're not invited. So maybe all caps, not invited, surrounded by quotation marks. Again, so if you're using text values, don't forget those quotation marks. Okay, so now we can step into our false value. So I'll put a comma. Now we're into the false value. And the false value, if it's not mic, then sure, the person's invited. So quotation marks again, because we have a text value. Now we've got our logical test, our true statement, and our false statement. So we can close this formula with a closing parentheses, press enter, and then we're going to copy this formula down and let's see if it works. And we can see that it did because there's a mic in the group and they're not invited. Now you can take this a step further with the if function. The great thing about that is if you had a few names that you had a negative emotion to, maybe it's a Ryan, maybe it's a Dale, maybe it's a Mike, you could take all of those people and just focus in on the invited people and leave out the ones who are not with a data filter. So we can click on the data tab, add a filter. And then just click on this drop arrow here. And then we can choose to unselect the not invited people because we don't want to see the name Mike anywhere in our worksheet. And that's how you could exclude information and focus on the information that we need. In this example, we're going to use the if function to determine the maximum 401k contribution for each employee based on their age. So if they're over 50, we're going to contribute, allow them to contribute up to $22,000. And if they're not over 50, then they get the $17,000. So just like the if function, it's either one or the other. There's no in between. This is how we would write that. And we're going to use the dialog box this time. So here's a way that you can foolproof the if function using the dialog box. So I'm going to say equal if, open parentheses. And now you can use the fx dialog box if you don't want to write the formula out. 
And the nice thing about this is that if you start typing the logical test and it doesn't pop up true or false, there's something wrong with your logical test. So for more complicated if functions, maybe like this one, you might want to use the dialog box, just click the FX button. It's the logical test here, which is their age, the employee's age, and is it, it's 50 or older. So I'm going to say that it's greater than or equal to 50 because somebody could be 50 right on. And we know that we've typed in the logical test properly because it tells us that the logical test is false. So if there's nothing there, that means your logical test is incomplete and you might have to add something so that it does become complete. So we have a logical test set up and the value if true is 22,000. So if they are 50 or over, they get the 22,000 contributed to their 401k. And if not, it's the other option, the 17,000. When we press OK, because this is a table, the formula will get copied down and then we can automatically calculate the 401k max contribution based on each of the employee's ages. In cell F20 of our worksheet, we've got a formula that works. It multiplies the price value by the quantity value to give us the charge value. The only issue is that we don't want a bunch of zeros in our worksheet. You don't want that in your worksheet. It looks messy. So we don't want to get rid of this formula, but we want to clean it up. So we can clean it up using the if function. So what I'm going to do is wrap the if function or embed it around the original formula. So what I'm going to do is in between the equal sign and the D20 reference, I'm going to type if and then open parentheses. Now we have to create a new logical test and our new logical test is going to be does the cell in E20, is it zero? Because if it's zero, then we don't want it showing up and it's gonna get multiplied by zero and we don't want a bunch of zeros where we don't need them, where there's no items. So what we wanna do is, is type in E20, is it greater than zero? Okay, so if it's greater than zero, then we can go ahead with our multiplication that we did where we multiplied the price by the quantity. However, if it's not, then we're just gonna leave it blank. So we'll put a comma around the true value. So the true value is the original formula. So if we say yes, okay, so, uh, there is a quantity there, it's greater than zero, we can multiply something by something. We can't multiply a price by zero. So that wouldn't work. And this way, the formula doesn't give us zeros where we don't need them. So we'll put open quotation mark, close quotation mark as our false value, and then we'll close the parentheses, we'll press enter, and now when we go to copy this formula down, you might notice something special happens with those zeros. They disappear because we cleaned them up with our if function. Now we want to encourage our customers to spend over $200 and if they do, notice how I said if, if they do, then they get a 10% discount and if not, they don't get the discount. So how would we write that in this discount cell? Well, we'll type equal if, open parentheses, our logical test is does the subtotal, is it greater than $200? And the true value is the 10% discount that they get, which is really the 10% discount here. So we'll use that cell reference, but we'll multiply it by the subtotal to get the discount. So whatever the subtotal is, if it's above 200, then they'll get the discount. So we have to multiply the 10% discount to however much they paid over 200. And if it's not that, then it's just open quotation mark, close quotation mark, we'll close the parentheses, press enter. And now we can see the person got a $20.75 discount from the subtotal. Now in the shipping charge cell, we want to create a different shipping fee depending on if it's standard or overnight. So there's two outcomes there. We can use the if function to accomplish this. So in the shipping charge cell, I'm going to type in equal if, open parentheses, and then I'm going to type as a logical test if this cell we type in or if it equals standard. Now you could choose overnight for this one as well. You can switch it up. Just the true and the false value would change depending on whether you chose standard or overnight. So the true value of standard is this price here in cell F16. And if it's not that, then it's just the value in cell F17. It can't be anything other than those two things. It has to be one or the other. So if it's not standard, it has to be overnight. So that really works well with our if function. So I'll press enter. Now when I go to type in standard and press enter, the shipping chart changes to the standard price. And if I typed in anything else, it'd be the overnight price.
You might have noticed a problem with this formula. If we type nothing in C15, this, the overnight price shows up. There's a simple fix to this by using another function inside of the if function, but you have to click on this video so you can learn how to do that.